9060 Doors is brought to you in part by Blades Bait and Tackle, your hard water connection to Little Baby Knock. Nine million acres of forest, 1,700 miles of continuous shoreline, 4,300 lakes, 12,000 miles of streams, more than 300 waterfalls, 15 counties, two time zones, and one area code. Welcome to the Upper Peninsula. Welcome to 906 Outdoors. Nine Hundred Six Outdoors is brought to you by Race Driven, your source for premier power sports products. Venison, pork, seasoning, and smoke. Individually, each conjures up its own thoughts of taste and uniqueness. But put all four together, add in some elbow grease and thyme, and you end up with a flavor sensation that has excited the taste buds of wild game eaters around many a camp table or Sunday afternoon football game. Salami, sausage, call it what you will. Add in some crackers and cheese, and you've got a combination that no afternoon shindig would be complete without. So when my friend Rick called and said him and his son Joe were going to be smoking a batch of sausage and jerky, I was there before he hung up the phone. Today we're going to start the process of uh, making venison sausage and a little later on some jerky. But first we're going to cut up the uh, pork butts here. Actually a pork shoulder. I like to use the shoulder. It seems easier to cut up. I like to cube this up. But the, the venison is dry, so we want to put a little more fat in there. Some of the bigger mussels here we'll use for for jerky with the straighter grain. And, but uh, there's this one, like a round steak, and it has a lot of tendons and stuff going in there. And uh, we'll just cut that up for sausage. Well, we got a, a ratio here of 1 to 1. 19 pounds of pork and venison. We'll mix them together, and then we mix the seasonings in. Most people just uh, grind it first and mix it with a, a mixer, but we're, we're going to do it a little different. This is a recipe I used for forever. I don't really measure anything, just put it in there. Eh? Some people ask for the recipe as well, here it is. And I got a little, I got tender quick in there, a little garlic, a little bit of cloves, black pepper. This is just cracked pepper and some mustard seed. After we season it up here, We'll grind it, grind it up and fry a piece and try it. And if it needs something, we'll put it in there. I uh, sometimes wonder if I put a little more of this or a little more of that, but sometimes too many spices is not good either. Then all you taste is spice, but you could grind the meat first and then put your seasonings in it and then use a, a mixer. For this sausage, I just think it's one more thing you gotta clean. We mix it up like this and run it through the grinder ready to run it through the stuffer. We'll cover this up and leave it sit for uh, overnight, 24 hours, whatever, to get the seasonings to soak into the meat, and we'll run her through the grinder. put this in the freezer and stiffen it up a little bit makes it easier to cut and we normally go with the grain just so it don't fall apart in the uh, smokehouse when you're doing it and depending on you know, how you like it you can cut it as thick or as thin as you want I like it uh, a little bit thicker you know this cut here is uh, the hind quarter longer pieces and it's easier to manage when you're doing your jerky uh, pieces of meat here you get the fat which is normal but um what you want to do is kind of fillet that off because if you don't when you're smoking your meat and sitting there brining or whatever you almost get like a rancid and rotten taste from the fat there so you just want to kind of get as much as you can off just so you get a good taste I guess this jerky I, I uh, kind of do a recipe uh, one that we had found, um, I don't know, years ago. When I was a kid, I wanted to make some jerky. And uh, so I told my dad I was gonna make some jerky out of the flank, you know. He said, hell no, he said, get a good piece of meat. Like, take the hind quarter and make some. I was like, oh, all right. Well, I didn't really know. So that's where, uh, that's where we started this. Tender quick in there, garlic powder. 
two tablespoons. Same thing with the onion powder. Two. People need a half a cup of soy sauce. Worcestershire sauce there. It's a little hot sauce stock that we make ourselves. This is a, a recipe from a friend of ours. He used to make his own hot sauce. Well, this is just a stock, which is uh, a lot of peppers, a little vinegar, and a tablespoon of salt. And that'll, that'll stay good for a couple years like that, just like that. Okay, now we're going to pour this in here. I like to have it so it's over the top of the meat, so I'm going to add a little water to that. Let me mix that around in there. Before this is done, what well, once a day, uh, it's probably going to stay in here for three, four days. Like once a day, you got to move it around, overhaul it, they call it, so that your every piece of meat gets the same amount of seasoning. It's out of the way for now. We'll leave it set over here for a while. Uh, we want to get that in a temperature, though, to where it's uh, just above freezing. If your meat's below freezing, it doesn't take on the brine. It doesn't take on the salt, the, the seasoning. you got to have it probably... Anywhere from 34 to 38 degrees, somewhere around there, and it's about the where it's the best for uh, seasoning anyway. What I'm gonna try is, uh, I'm gonna experiment a little bit here. I like to see how things come out. Sometimes they come out good, and sometimes they don't. I don't. So hopefully this batch here comes out good. What we're gonna do is see if I can get some sweet and spicy jerky going. So get that in there. Um, Jasper's. Maple syrup, a quarter cup of that. Pepper stock, we used in the other one there. I'm gonna use a little bit more than he did. Put a little onion powder in there. This right here is some insecure. We don't want too much of that in there, else it'll be so salty you can't eat it. There we go. We'll just have to smoke and see how it comes out. Hopefully it comes out good. Our meat's been sitting for a day or so and uh, it, as you can see, it's kind of dry. Won't go through the, the grinder easily that way. So we're gonna add some uh, ice water to this. And some recipes will, will even tell you to put ice water in it. But to make it a little more pliable, it goes through the grinder without having to push it through. It makes it easy to stuff it as well. It soaks up a lot of water. See how it slides through the grinder? You don't have to jam it down there with a stuffer. If you didn't add that water to it, you'd have to pack it down in there with, the, with that stuffer. So we'll, we'll grind a little bit and then uh, we'll fry a piece and try it. Make sure we got the right amount of seasoning to our taste anyway. If not, we'll add a little more. And if it's good, we'll grind her all up and run her through the stuffer. A little bit more salt, but not a lot. Needs more salt. Well, we decided to put a little bit more garlic and a little seasoning salt. Now after the, the meat's all done coming out of the grinder here, I'm going to throw these crackers in there to uh, help clean it out. It's easier for cleaning and putting it away. Okay, we're gonna stuff these in these uh, fibrous or uh, like a collagen casing. We've got to soak them in water to uh, get them a little more flexible. So as the sausage goes in there, it'll uh, expand a little bit. Otherwise, it'll just rip. You want to stuff it in there as much as you can without ripping it, so it don't all shrivel up when it's in the smokehouse. We'll soak these for three to four minutes. I'll put them in there and I'll just leave them in there till as I'm using them. Now we're gonna fill the the stuffer here. This old stuffer from a buddy of mine, found it at a flea market. We're gonna pack this in there, and try to uh, get out as much air as we can. Nine Hundred Six Outdoors is brought to you in part by Christ, your Northwoods neighborhood store.
and get them as firm as possible without busting them. Now we gotta open this up a little bit, let that dry. That end will dry so that the uh, string won't slip off when it's hanging in the smoker. These casings, uh, being that they're pliable and, and wet now from the, the meat, the smoke does penetrate pretty good. I, I, I smoked these for probably 12 hours. It always uh, seems to penetrate pretty well. And I like these casings this length too, because they, uh, otherwise you hang them in the, in the when they're hanging in the, in the smokehouse, if the casing is too long, then the top part is cooked more than the bottom, unless you'd crawl in there and flip them upside down, which is uh, not fun. The darker casings are, uh, they seem to be um, a little different consistency here. They, uh, they're, uh, yeah, these don't seem to, to stretch as much. I mean, these are almost rubbery. But there again, once you, you know, when, when we uh, are stuffing it, they have a tendency to rip also. I've done that before, trying to stuff them too tight. This old stuffer, for this reason right here, the cleanup. You take it apart. Most of these, most of these stuffers are all built. This is all casted together, you know. So you got to take the whole thing and take it off and clean it. Where this one here, I like the pot comes right off of there. Throw it right in the sink and clean it. Today's Wild Game Break is brought to you by Cooking Wild Seasonings. Make it fresh, make it yours. Find out more at cookingwildseasonings.com. Just like apple pie and ice cream, peanut butter and jelly. Next to a plate of cheese is pretty much the way you expect to find your summer sausage on the table. But that's not the only way to enjoy it. Slice up some summer sausage. I like jalapeno for this. And give it a little heat. Maybe even a quick sear to really make the flavors come alive. Serve it just like that for a great snack. Or get a bit more creative. Put it on a bun. Or some Texas toast. And turn it into a hot sandwich. Maybe add some fried onions, a few jalapenos, Top it off with your favorite cheese. If you like summer sausage, I guarantee you'll love this. We're on our last leg of uh, our sausage journey here. That's the smokehouse. Um, we usually start a fire in the bottom and uh, it takes uh, probably an hour or so to get going, but uh, we're gonna speed that up by uh, just getting some coals out of the boiler here. There's a nice bed of hardwood coals here, put in the bottom of the smokehouse. This actually serves two purposes. One, you get the fire going right away, and two, usually it's uh, in the single digits or 20 degrees and when you're putting jerky in the in the smoker your hands are wet and it's usually cold and you're freezing but once you get these coals in there nice and warm so now we're gonna hang the sausage in there
These casings used to come uh, about this long, and uh, with the the way the way it works, I mean the heat's all up here, and uh, so we'd have to come in here and switch these around like this because they were so long. Because all the heat, you know, it's cooking up here, not so much down here. But uh, we figured out we get shorter casings. We don't have to do that. I like to knock the bark off of this, at least the, the moss. This is uh, hard maple, sugar maple. A lot of people use uh, tag elder, I never did. A lot of people use uh, um, apple wood. I don't want to have a real big fire to start off with. The smoke tends to get into the meat if it's cool. When you're cooking a steak, you sear the outside so the juices stay in. This is the same thing. You get it too hot and the smoke won't go in. You won't, you won't get a good smoke. We're gonna close her up now. We're gonna check it periodically. Temperature, how much smoke we got. We'll probably leave it in there for probably 12, 14 hours. We gotta keep after it. Gotta stay here and watch it. Things can go bad in a hurry. Uh, it gets too hot or whatever. I mean, uh, I've, I've had it happen before. Today's show is brought to you in part by Rapid River Knife Works, home of Michigan's largest custom knife factory showroom. Well, this has been marinating for two days. Nope. Marinated all the way through. And, and, and this rack here is good for it, if it's really cold out or if it's pouring rain out. It's easier to put it on in the house than uh, standing out in the smoker. This, right now the smokehouse has uh, sausage in there. So we uh, try to make it a little easier here without smoking us out. Yep. You know, turn that one sideways and put it way over. Pull it to you a little bit. Now we got to lay the rest of it on top of it. We're going to put this in for a couple hours, and then we're just going to keep uh, checking it periodically to uh, see how it's drying. We basically, I mean, we're smoking it, but we basically want to dry it. The smoke is just giving it a little different flavor. And when it's getting close, we want to we want to check it about every 15 minutes because um, it can it can burn. I get, it gets crunchy, it's like eating chalk. You don't want that. Stoke up this fire a little bit. We try to maintain, uh, at this point, around, around a 100, 125, but being that we were just in there a little bit, the temperature goes down a little bit. And when it's, when it's almost done, you know, we want to get up to around, around 160, 165, 170 for about a couple hours, make sure it's cooked. Been in there four hours. Um, and we just checked it a minute ago, and this, this stuff that's more open, I believe, is, uh, is dry enough to be, oh yeah, we're going to bag this up, and then uh, we'll check the rest of it. It's dry, but it's kind of flexible yet. That's, that's the texture we were looking for right there. All right, let's pull this out, and we'll check those ones that were a little bit closer together. And they could use some more time, I think. You check one, see what you think. All right. Well, some of this ain't quite done. It was too close together. Takes a little more to dry it out. Let's take a few of these pieces off here so it don't burn up on us. I think yours might be done there, Joe. Yeah. But you can feel it gets uh, kind of firm. It's not quite done yet. We're gonna put a little more wood on the fire and warm it up. And we'll come and check it in another half hour. And I'm believing it should be done. You can tell the difference in the taste, for sure. Oh yeah. 
His is more of a sweet and spicy like you were trying to get. Yeah. I think he got it. Really? Because I didn't want it. I can't tell the flavor I'm getting. I didn't want it hot hot. You'll get it. Temperature's good. Fire's good. This is our cool down method here. We didn't get any snow and it's raining out. We put them in this water here to cool them down so that they, uh, it stays nice and firm like this. It cools the fat down so it don't all shrivel up. One more, and you can slap that cover back on. Take her in. Okay, now for the taste test. Looks good.